As photographers, we are often asked where we draw inspiration for our photo shoots. And instead of looking toward other photographers to draw inspiration from, where it may be more challenging to create something new and interesting, we instead look to other art forms. Watching something amazing usually inspires us to want to create something. So in this video, we're going to cover four different sources that we draw from to show you how we can take a movie, a show, a book, or a song to a fully realized photo shoot. And we'll be using Milanote along the way to help us organize all of our thoughts and ideas. So a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Over the years, we've made a few videos where we craft a photo shoot based off of a song or a movie like this one. Or this one. You can draw inspiration from something as simple as a color palette, the overall mood, the wardrobe, the composition, whatever. So now let's break down our approach to creating shoots inspired by other art forms. Now we've mentioned this in many videos, but we often create mood boards for each photo shoot. And now you can do this in Photoshop or a word processing program or just whatever you have access to, but we've been using a platform called Milanote to help us organize everything. Let me just say that we actually genuinely love Milanote and we use it. Um, it's actually like, there was kind of like a little bit of a hole in our, um, it was always like a, a pain point to try to like make a mood board in Photoshop and make yeah, it look good. Yeah, and make it look good. And it would be like, you don't want to spend too much time focused on the mood board, but like also you kind of want it to look nice. And so this is something that um, we feel really confident, like sending it to brands when we have to work with them. It just looks really professional. Or even just for, yeah, for us, or even for like the videographer, like this is what the shoot's gonna look like to send to the models. This is like our overall inspiration. So it's, yeah, it's something that we really love. Yeah, it's and really cool. So let's dive in and take a look. So we have boards for each medium. So let's start with perhaps the easiest one, movies. Okay, so this first board is um, based off of a shoot that we already did and we have a video for it on the channel. It's called Meet Me in Montauk. Um, it's a shoot that we were inspired by Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. But normally when we're inspired by a, a book or a movie, we use it to build the shoot from. Um, but in this specific case, we actually just like recreated some of the scenes because they look very uh, cinematic, like the way that we kind of like to shoot. So we thought it'd be really cool to just kind of like take a couple, dress them in like similar outfits, take them to, to Montauk where the movie takes mm -hmm. place and yeah, kind of like recreate some of our favorite scenes. So and here's what we came up with. Yeah, and the scenes like we literally just, we watched the movie and we took like a photo of the TV as we're watching it. And that's just how we got this the stills for to draw inspiration from. So these are just us taking a photo of our, like, our projector on the left. And then on the right is like our our end image that we got from that. And so, yeah, like Rachel was saying, it's more of like direct inspiration where oftentimes we don't do it so directly inspired, but yeah. um, this just shows you that you can do, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules. Yeah, but even in being directly inspired by it and like recreating shots, we still kind of made them our own because we didn't have the same set. Yeah, like this shot here, like it was um, at night with a red light now it's a day, it's a different set, it's a different type of composition. And so when you have these kind of, like when you have something to go off of, you can then be creative outside of like the inspiration you've already like established. Yeah, like I like this one right here where um, the, the walls kind of like frame them in and uh, the composition to me is like nicer than the actual movie one, but the inspiration from the movie is still obviously there. Yeah. So you could see uh, we took this movie and we kind of recreated the images in just still photo format. And so now let's move on to something where it's like more abstract. Let me just say though, that by doing this, um, even though we're like recreating these movie scenes, this isn't something that everybody like on Instagram is doing. So even though um, we're like recreating the movie, we're still making something, we're making photos that aren't like overdone or like seen a million times before. And so when you put them on a place like Instagram, they're still gonna stand out. And it's also a way to like grow when you like have to reverse engineer. Okay, like what, what kind of lens do they kind of shoot this with and maybe what kind of depth of field should I use? And so you can kind of think about all these different elements that go into photography uh, to just reverse engineer a shot too. Okay, so instead of doing uh, maybe like shot for shot type shoot, now let's take a movie, build a mood board that's inspired by the movie. Um, and just to show you how our, our process for doing that. And yeah. so we're gonna use the movie A Ghost Story, which is a really cool movie if you haven't seen it yet. Um, it's one of our favorites. We played it at our wedding. So we'll start by looking for some like uh, movie stills from, from that film. So let me just pull that up here. And so what are, what, like, what are we looking for? Like composition? So we want color palette. Color palette. We want wardrobe. We want location setting. Um, we want mood. We want, like, these are all the things that we 
we want to um, like be inspired by in our photo shoot. So again, we're not trying to recreate these images. We're just trying to get inspired by the color palettes. And here's the like mood. like just this still like I like that composition. So let's grab that one for. Um, that, I mean, that would work for color palette. It would work for setting. It would work for mood. I like her listening to the music because that was a big part of the movie. It also would oh, yeah. make for... Um, it's a cool shot. Yeah, it kind of gives you like more inspiration for like your composition or the angle that you shoot from. Yeah. That's actually not a still from the movie. That's actually the still photographer or the set photographer, Brett Curry, shot that, and we actually bought that print from him. That's in yeah. our hallway. We have like a good idea of like the mood, right? You can easily see. This is moody, it's a little darker. Um, you can start to pull some colors from this um, based off how you want to take, like what direction you want to take the shoot in. So I'm seeing some like, some reds in, in these in these shots. So we can pull like this, a maroon, a deep red. So we can start to build a color palette that way. But do you want to grab more so we can organize everything into boards, like more locations? So now I think we should start organizing this into like boards, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start making a color palette with Photoshop. I just grab the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna just click and drag over to my Milano board. And like this, maybe that red color is good. And I can make a little color squ swatch. Squatch. Squatch. It's pretty nice. What do you think? I, th I think that's awesome. So this is our color palette. So when we're looking at our location, when we're looking at our wardrobe, we're gonna keep this color palette in mind so that it matches the same like feeling and same vibe as a ghost story. Yeah, so that's gonna be like our little mantra when we're going through and- Our what? Our mantra. Our mantra? Our mantra. When we go through and we're picking out our wardrobe, when we're picking out our location. Time uh, of day. Yeah, time of day, when we're, you know, choosing our lighting and when we're um, editing. All right. Okay, so then next let's do, do you wanna do mood? Yeah. Do you want to do location? Yeah, let's do location. I think that's probably enough to like build a shoot around. So if I haven't seen this movie and somebody handed me this board, then I'm like, okay, well I need an old rural house or we can go into like a sterile hospital or we can do like an abandoned sort of place. Like I'm. I have like a good idea of some of the settings that like lend themselves to the mood. Okay, so now we have color palette, mood, location. We could go on and do wardrobe, but um, I think we should just call it quits here because I think we've established pretty much everything that we'd want to know to do uh, this kind of shoot. But now we can move on to different art forms. But first, let's um, let me just organize this a little bit better, real quick. Then you have everything you need right there. So if you really want to do a shoot um, with this concept, you could add like a to-do list and be like, okay, find model, get location, pack gear maybe. Well, I'll get wardrobe. Wardrobe. And that way you can kind of stay organized and see where you are. We'll link that shoot inspiration below. And if you're looking for something to be inspired by or to shoot, shoot that, tag us in it. We'd love to see what you come up with. So for TV, it's kind of very similar. We would start by get, looking for still frames that we really like. And so for this one, we watched a Queen's Gambit miniseries on Netflix. We loved it. We thought it was like just the colors, the composition, 
uh, the mood of the of the main actress. Like everything about it was like so, so cool. The entire time we we watched it, every single shot was like, ooh, it was such like a an amazing still. Okay, so let's go for color. The colors on this are so specific. It mostly takes place in like the 50s or 60s, I don't remember. Um, but it has that like retro color palette mm -hmm. and she has this gorgeous red hair and they use that to their advantage, yeah. to her advantage often. And so they'll put her in like greens. They put her up against um, this like retro wallpaper a lot of times. I mean, look at this shot. Where she, <laughs> oh. It's really cool. All right, so we just wrapped up the mood board for Queen's Gambit. Let's take a look. We broke it down into color palette, composition, location, mood, and wardrobe. So color palette, once again, we got a few scenes that we love the colors of and made a color palette out of it. Yeah, to me, those colors are like, they scream like 50s. Um, it's like a really retro color palette, so um, I think it works. A composition. So what we noticed over and over and over again are these three things, levels, layers, and balance. Um, and then there's some visual tension and a lot of symmetry. So those are some photos that we feel like we're strong examples of those things and will work to be good inspiration. Location, very 50s and 60s inspired, a lot of wallpaper, a lot of patterns, just a vintage and retro feeling. And, and again, yeah. they kind of um, play into that color palette. And then mood, it's, what, pensive, stoic. Intense and moody. Yeah, so um, we thought those images kind of captured that pretty well. And then lastly, wardrobe. To get this, um, to get these photos, we didn't have to make them. All we did was Google yeah. Queen's Ga Gambit wardrobe and there was a lot of these already. Yeah. So that was really easy. Yep. Can you hear my stomach growling? No, it's like, it's oh. I'm cut that out. Once again, uh, feel free to <laughs> do a photo shoot based off Queen's Gambit. We'd love to see what you can do with it. Um, but for now, let's move on. Let's talk about how to create a mood board based off a song. Okay, so we've done this before. One of our very first videos was explaining how you can be inspired by a song to make uh, an entire photo shoot. And so we chose the song Honey Magnolia from Brian Fallon. So if we wanted to create a, a mood board from scratch off of a different song, um, we can do that. So we grabbed Chinatown from Bleachers. I got the lyrics here in Millinote so we can like kind of pull visual elements from the lyrics. To I've create. never looked at the lyrics of this song. Yeah, so it's talking about a car, first of all, and the way the song is, it has like this, it has like this instantly nostalgic and, and vintage sound to yeah. the actual music. All Bleachers sounds sound like they're from the 80s. Yeah. So if you can incorporate that in some way, that would be awesome. Yeah, so I kind of picture like an old, maybe kind of like a beater car, just like something, kind of one of those rusty rusty and cars this, from like the 80s. This song is super location heavy. So he talks about, it's called Chinatown. So mm -hmm. I think it's in a city, um, probably in a Chinatown. Probably New York, because yeah. it's Bleachers. Um, and then they call out like, um, like a shower, a car, um, what else? I don't remember. Well, there's a, so you have shadows, you have black tears, you have front stoop. Um, oh, front stoop. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. So you have like chasing a feeling, running. So you have like, you can easily incorporate that. This is, we should actually, we should not, actually do this. Yeah, we shouldn't give this one away. We should just do this one. <laughs> yeah. So what we then do is then find like, car inspiration, find old cars, get the idea of like what we're looking for. Um, and then the location, sounds like a lot of it would be exterior. So um, that'd be a little bit easier in a lot of, a lot of ways. I think that um, Phil Chester, our wedding photographer, shout out Phil Chester. Um, has a Chinatown shoot in New York City mm -hmm. with a couple that yeah. would probably be good for this. Yeah, that that's like a good way you could kind of blend inspiration too if you want it. Yeah, we're telling people not to go off of Instagram, but. Okay, so for this one, we just decided to make one board encompassing the entire 
everything. And it's it makes me so excited that I like really I want to do this shoot. The next time we go to New York, I think we should do yeah. this. Yeah. So we started with the car because I was like the first lyric of the song, and then we went over to grab some like a, a walk up a stoop. Yeah. yeah, New York Chinatown, and then um, we thought of like okay, it has like this vintage, you know. Uh, we grabbed an outfit like kind of. Blue jeans and white t-shirt, leather jacket. Yeah. And then it made us think of this shoot by photographer Phil Chester. And even though we said uh, we tend to look to other art forms, well, sometimes like this can lead you back to photography, which is fine. And then you're drawing inspiration from multiple places instead of just from like one photo or one photographer. Yeah. And so we grabbed some Phil Chester images. Yeah, because he shoots couples in New York in and in Chinatown in New York. And they have that nostalgic vintage yeah, vibe too. Honestly, his shoots seem inspired by this specific yeah. song. So we kind of have everything all together now, just from that one song. That's really cool. And it'd honestly be a really fun shoot to do next time we're in New York. Okay, so moving on to books, uh, Rachel picked Great Expectations for our inspiration. I've never read the book, but Rachel knows all about it. So uh, we put together this mood board. What do, what do we got? So, okay, the main reason why I love Great Expectations and the inspiration that I mainly get from it is um, like the feeling of like, je ne sais quoi. The feeling of like pininess. I don't really know what the word would be, but wanting, the, yeah, yearning. desire, yearning. Um, and so we're specifically like focusing in on Miss Havisham, who I think is like one of the best characters written of all time. And um, in her house, which is Sadie's house, it's like a, a mansion. It's an it's a stately house in England on the English countryside. I imagine um, in around the like middle of the 1800s and um, it's like dilapidated, it's like a little bit overgrown. She's a person who's abandoned. She's a person who's like kind of stuck in time. And so what we um, came up with is this idea of like overgrowth. And so we chose two images from a, a series called Overgrowth from another photographer. So we're also pulling from photography for this one as well. And then the locations that we chose are these like overgrown gardens, these abandoned, houses, this overgrown car is even really cool. Um, and then like just this like sort of stately place. So this is gonna be a tricky one to find on Pierce Space, but for a certain photographer, I think you could pull it off. The color palette that we chose is like this like sort of vintage feeling um, color palette from like. We just Googled Victorian era color palette. And that was one of the ones that came up. Mm -hmm. And then we also have this picture of a Miss Havisham from like a play or a TV adaption. But I think that's like kind of like what I picture in my head too. So yeah, so the idea would be to have this moodiness of like desire, pining, mm -hmm. this feeling of like overgrowth and yeah, like a really pretty, like abandoned location. Okay, so we've created mood boards for four different art forms, four different mediums. And we've also done the mood boards in separate and in, in different ways where um, some of them are more in depth than others. That's fine too, it's whatever will get you out there and start shooting and give you enough to be inspired from. Yeah, um, sometimes like when you show up to the shoot, you just want to be able to like look at one thing and sort of yeah. take it all in together. So you don't always have to be so check off your wardrobe, location, composition, you know, you can do it however you want. Yeah, but some people that's helpful for too, yeah. so. So hopefully that helps. We get asked about our inspiration all the time. So that's kind of our whole process for creating a shoot based off something that inspires us. Yeah, and this video is probably gonna be like five minutes long, but just know that we've been up here for like two hours making these. Um, yeah. And Daniel has to somehow edit it. Why are you shaking the table? <laughs> Cause I feel nervous about how much you have to edit. You're nervous for me? Yeah. So if you want to check out Milano for yourself, click the link in the description. It's a really cool platform, as you can see. Uh, it's really helped us organize all of our thoughts and images and words. Yeah, and check out our boards if you want to shoot them and tag us in them so we can see. All right. And don't do the Chinatown one because I want that one. Yeah, that's ours. <laughs> and check out our channels. Yeah, we have a fitness channel and how to make money online channel. And uh, consider subscribing to Mango Street if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Like this video. Subscribe if you aren't already. Watch all the old videos that everybody keeps missing. All right, thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.